Hi again, everyone. Welcome back to our course in College Algebra. Dr. Tom McNamara here again. We're going to continue our work with these exponential functions. In this video, we're going to talk about graphs of exponential functions. So the two key takeaways from this are the basic shape. And actually, I guess there's really two basic shapes that I'll need you to remember, depending on what kind of base we're dealing with. So the basic shape, it's going to be like a new kind of function that we have in our repertoire. We've already talked about several basic graphs, including the absolute value function, the squaring function, the square root function, the cubing function, etc. So we have some basic graphs already. We're going to add to that with the basic graphs of exponential functions. And also how to apply transformations to these basic graphs. It's important to remember that we have a solid toolkit for dealing with changes to a function and manifesting those in changes to a graph. So let's get right into this basic shape business. By plotting the graph of an exponential function. Okay, so I'll draw it right here on the board. I'll be very careful to make my tick marks nice and evenly spaced. Be real methodical when I'm drawing this. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to plot the graph of y equals power x. Okay, so whenever I talk about an exponential function in this course, I mean a function with a variable exponent. Okay, so polynomials have exponents, but in a polynomial like x squared plus 5x plus 1 or something like that, it has an exponent, but the exponent is fixed with a polynomial. So a polynomial has the base being variable and the exponent is fixed. With an exponential function, we swap that. The base is fixed and the exponent is variable. Okay, so we know how to make sense of this function for a lot of different x values. We know how to do it for positive whole numbers, right? Like 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. 3, 4, okay, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, way up here. We know what 2 to the 0 is, anything to the 0 is 1, okay, go, go and check that video that we had, I think it was two rounds ago, that tells us how to deal with 0 exponents and negative exponents. 2 to the 0 is 1, so that means 0 comma 1 should be on the graph. 0 goes into the function, 1 comes out. Okay, and we know how to make sense of this for negative 1. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. Okay, so we're getting this kind of behavior with this function. This is what our graph is looking like. On the right hand side, we are rising very quickly over there. On the left-hand side, the graph is flattening out toward the x-axis. We've seen that kind of flattening out behavior before when we talked about rational functions. This is a horizontal asymptote. The function has a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals 0. Okay, so this is the basic shape for your exponential functions. Okay, they're all going to go through 0 comma 1 because anything to the 0 power is 1. We discussed that in a previous video. They also go through 1 comma whatever the base is. So this goes through 1 comma 2. If we had 3 to the x, it would go through 1 comma 3. If we had 5 to the x, it would go through 1 comma 5, okay? So these will be like our anchor points with this basic shape. Flat over here, rising very sharply over there. Some people call this a 
hockey stick shaped curve. Here's the handle of the hockey stick, and there's the blade if you put a hockey stick kind of vertical. So its, so it's handle is flat, and then the blade goes up. Okay, so this is the basic shape. Now, let me kind of summarize it over here. So remember, our exponential functions will always go through 0, 1, and let's just use a to the x. They'll go through 1, comma a, and they'll have th that hockey stick shaped curve that we just talked about, rising very sharply over here, flattening out over there. Okay, now this assumes that your base is bigger than 1. Okay, if your base is bigger than 1, then you're going to rise from here to here. Okay, so like that. Now, if your base is smaller than 1, you're going to get a slightly different picture here. You're still going to go through 0, 1. But if A is smaller than 1, then you're actually going to go down. So you're going to get this behavior. You're still flattening out to the x-axis, but it's going to be on the right side rather than on the left side. Okay, and this is the scenario that you're looking at if your base is between 0 and 1. Okay, so it's the same basic shape, it's just flipped. It's the mirror image, right? So if a is bigger than 1, rising on the right, if A is smaller than when we're flattening out on the right. Uh, so you might notice two things. I excluded the possibility that A equals 1. Right? This is if A is greater than 1, and this is if A is less than 1. Okay, so why did I exclude that? Well, the reason is an exponential function with base 1 is not a very interesting function, and it's not going to fit this type of behavior. You take 1 to any power, you get 1 back again. You take 1 to the 5th power, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, you get 1. You take 1 to any power, you get 1. So in that case, flat horizontal line. It doesn't fit this type of behavior. So um, exponential function base 1 isn't really even an exponential function. You'll also notice I excluded the possibility that A is negative. Right? This is for A greater than 1. This is for a less than 1, but still greater than 0. All right? uh, the reason we're doing that is if you allow a to be negative, then you get complex number outputs. So we're going to stick to functions that give us real number outputs in this course. Okay, so these are your basic shapes. So let's go and apply that to graphing an exponential function. So let's do a quick example. Sketch the graph of y equals 3 power x minus 2 plus 1. Okay, so let's think about what's happened here. I'm starting with this picture. So my basic graph is going to be y equals 3 to the x. And I can graph that very quickly using my anchor points. 0, 1 is always on an exponential function. So I'm starting with y equals 3 to the x. And then I'm going to see how to get this graph by making changes to, the, to my basic graph. Okay, so... As discussed, we're going to have this behavior here. Okay, so I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 for this function. Now I want you to look at the changes that were made between this function 
and the one we were given in the problem. x has been replaced with x minus 2. It's not 3 to the x, it's 3 to the x minus 2. And we know what that does. That moves you two units to the right. Okay, don't forget we've got quite an arsenal of, of transformations that we can work with. So we know how this type of change affects the graph. It moves the graph two units to the right. This, we know what that does, okay? It's going to move you up one, okay? Because you added one to the outside. You did the function, you did the exponential function base three, and then added one. Adding one on the outside moves your graph either up or down, okay? If you add something like this, you're going to go up one unit. Okay, so we're going to take our anchor points and do those transformations. Two units right, one unit up. So 0, 1 ends up over there. Okay, this is 1, 3. Two units right, one unit up. I end up over there. I'm also going to get a new horizontal asymptote. The whole graph moves up one unit. So the horizontal asymptote for my new graph is not going to be at y equals zero. It's shifted up one unit. Horizontal asymptote is now y equals 1, and then we do our same basic hockey stick curve, not flattening out towards 0, but flattening out towards our new horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Okay, so don't forget all that stuff we talked about with transformations. We have a new basic graph to work with, the basic graph of the exponential function. In fact, I guess it's a whole family of basic graphs, okay? y equals 3 to the x, we can graph that pretty easily, okay? The 3 to the x one is over here in the white, and our new function, 3 to the x minus 2 plus 1, that's what I've graphed in the orange, using what we know about transformations together with the fact that we know the basic shapes for these graphs of exponential functions. Okay, so a new family of basic graphs to work with.